Hey guys, thanks for joining and welcome to our 54th video on ProjectOiler.net. Today we're going to be taking a look at problem number 54, Poker Hands. Quick note on this video, I initially recorded this yesterday, but there were some technical issues that I faced again similar to a few videos back where the webcam audio, visual, and the screen share were all out of sync with each other, so unfortunately I couldn't use that footage. So instead what I'll do today is I'll go through the problem as I normally do, but instead of developing it in real time, I'll just go over the implementation I have here and go over the thought process I had initially, some of the work I had to do, some of the problems I had to solve while I was coding it. I'll give a walkthrough of the code itself and then I'll run the program so that we can see that we get the correct answer and see how long it takes to get that answer. In other words, how performant the implementation is. So the problem reads, in the card game poker, a hand consists of five cards and are ranked from lowest to highest in the following way. High card, highest value card, one pair, two cards of the same value, two pair, three of a kind, straight where all cards are consecutive values, flush where all cards are of the same suit, full house, three of a kind and a pair, four of a kind, straight flush and royal flush being the highest possible value hand you can have. They give the order of the cards here, two through 10, jack, queen, king, ace. And one thing to note, I don't play poker, but I'm pretty sure there are some variations of that game where an ace can be used as a one value as well. So you could have a straight with ace, two, three, four, five. But this problem doesn't have that listed as one of the options. So we'll go ahead and ignore that variation. The problem goes on to say, if two players have the same ranked hands, then the rank made up of the highest value wins. For example, a pair of eights beats a pair of fives. But if two ranks tie, for example, both players have a pair of queens, the highest cards in each hand are then compared. If the highest card is tied, then the next highest cards are compared, so on and so forth. They give us five examples here. Then they say the file poker.txt contains 1,000 random hands dealt to two players. Each line of the file contains 10 cards separated by a single space. The first five are player one cards, and the last five are player two cards. You can assume that the hands are valid, no invalid characters or repeated cards. Each player's hand is in no specific order, and each hand there is a clear winner. How many hands does player one win? So there are two main things we have to do here. One is read the file in, and two is compare the hands to each other. Find a way of comparing the hands so that we can see which one wins in each case. And then based on each input file, do the ranking, aggregate the number of left hand wins, and at the end return that. So initially I thought of two separate ways we could do the comparison between two hands. The first way I thought of was consider both hands at the same time and walk through these kind of steps to see if one has this or the other has this. If both has it, then we can go down and do the tiebreaker of checking the highest card values. However, I decided instead to take an approach where we just consider each hand independently. So instead of considering player one and player two hands at the same time, we can just consider one hand by itself without any context of other players. We assign a numerical rank to that hand and then just compare the numbers that we get for comparing the player one hand versus the player two hand. So that's the approach I took there. And I had a little bit of difficulty during the implementation because there was some debugging I had to do. I realized that there was a sorting logic bug so that we were returning smaller values instead of bigger values in certain situations. So I was able to actually find out what the problem was by using a spec file to generate code coverage report and figure out which lines either I wasn't covering in my test scenarios or which weren't being hit in the actual input. So I was able to eventually work through that. So now I'm going to go ahead and describe the solution itself. So the method here, do solve, takes a file named string. You might notice I have two files here, poker.txt and pokertest.txt. The test file contains these five examples that they gave in the problem, as well as a few examples I created in order to debug the implementation. And I added the feature that we can have a comment at the end so that I could keep notes for myself. So when I was debugging, I could use this text file. Then when it's time to run the real program, I could use the real text file. So what I'm doing in do solve is I set an initial value, num left hand wins to zero. Then I have a method read file lines where I pass in the file name. Then for each line, I'll map the line to the player one hand and the player two hand. I'm calling that left hand right hand. I rank each one. And if left hand rank is higher than the right one, I increment that value. And at the end, I return that value. Notice this is asynchronous just because the method to read the file lines is itself asynchronous. So coming down here, first let me come up here and talk about how I defined an actual card. So for the card, I have an interface which says card value, which is a number. Values such as T for 10 or queen or jack are mapped to numbers such as 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, ace being 14. And then the suit, which is a string. Then I have an interface for a hand, which 
contains entries for values so that if there's two cards of the same value, we'll see the value here and the count here. So that type of representation would help us considering pairs of two or pairs of three, or if there are no pairs at all, we'll have five separate entries. And then just the number of distinct suits. So now coming map line to hand, we start with left hand cards and right hand cards being an empty array. We know for a fact there will be five entries in each of them by the time we're done. For the line, we split it by the white space and run this callback for each card string, which is something like this, two character representation of the card that they give us, and the index. I've, if index is greater than nine return because I want to ignore the comments that I've written, then I'm saying, the value string and the suit are the first two characters of the card string. And we're mapping the value string to a number based on certain rules of its T, 10, J, 11, Q, 12, etc. Otherwise, just parse the int. Then add the suit there. If the index is less than five, we know we're working with the left hand. So add that card to the left hand cards. Otherwise, add it to the right hand cards. Then we're just returning both in an array of two elements. Now, in terms of the read file lines, what I'm doing is I'm streaming the file and reading it one line at a time. So that way, instead of reading the whole thing into memory in like an array, and then processing over the array, I can just read it one by one and not have to keep up all that storage in memory at once. And this just invokes the callback for each line. The map cards to hand, I just have some logic which will handle an array of cards, five cards per hand. It'll aggregate how many values appear in the card more than once, check the number of suits found in the card, and return that information. Basically, what I described above, then we have the method, this is where the main implementation is rank hand. So if the hand number of suits is one, that means we have a flush or a straight flush or a royal flush. So we handle with the helper method, otherwise we handle many suits with that helper method. And then we just parse the int that we get from it. Now the way I'm actually representing the number is the leftmost digit is one digit representing the rank, so to speak. So this has a rank of 10, royal flush, nine, eight, etc., up to one. So that is the leftmost digit, and it's one digit long. The rest of the number to the right is 10 digits long, and that'll just be tiebreaker information. So for a royal flush, it doesn't really matter. For a straight flush, this will give us the actual values of the cards ranked from highest to lowest. So the highest cards go on the left digits, lowest values go on the right digits. Similarly for the flush situation. In this case, we have different rankings for four of a kind. We return eight the four value and then the one value, full house, the three value and the two value. So that way we know if the two players have a full house, we'll rank based on what the value of the three cards is and then what the value of the two cards is. Similar for straight, we return the value of which player has the highest cards. In the case where we have highest cards, we just return that as well with a one in front. Then we have a separate logic for three of a kind. What we're doing is we're getting the one that has a three value, putting that up front. Then for each of the one values, that is the cards that are unique, that do not appear in a pair or anything, we're just sorting them by highest to lowest value, setting them to a string and mapping with a pad start, so that way no matter what, it's always two digits long, and then joining it. Similarly with two pairs and one pair. Now we have this throw error here, but this condition is actually never reached. That was just useful for debugging purposes. Hand is straight, so we're determining that by if the hand value's length is five, each one's a different card. And we're checking if the first value minus the last value is equal to four. If it is, then we know there's a consecutive sequence there. This one concat values as a helper. For certain tiebreakers, we would just concatenate all of the values of the cards, two digits each, so that way we could have highest to lowest, that would be a tiebreaker. With that type of implementation, we're guaranteed that each hand will map to a unique ranking. And it doesn't matter what order the cards are provided in, it just matters that each hand maps to a unique rank. So even if the order is different, but the cards themselves are the same, it'll map to the same value. So this algorithm essentially lets us map any possible hand in poker to a numerical value. And they're not necessarily consecutive values like one, two, three, four, etc. We could do a reverse map, but there's no need for that here. So that's how we're able to rank the hands and solve them without comparing hand one explicitly to hand two. So this could work if there's five, six, seven, eight players in a game, we don't have to compare everybody to everybody else. So that is also a benefit here. Now I wouldn't be surprised if one of the future Project Euler problems had this type of implementation with ranking n number of players. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get and how long it takes. Okay, so we got that in 42 milliseconds. The solution is 376. I'll run it again one more time. You can see what we get, 39 milliseconds. So the solution is performant. 
So that covers the content for today. If you made it to the end, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications for more Project Euler videos. I'm going to be posting these at a rate of one per day, 12 o'clock noon, until we have 100 videos published, 100 problems solved. Thanks for watching.